This edition of The Trainer is brought to you by Auto. To see the full line of professional diagnostic tools and equipment from Auto, visit www.autel.com. Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Trainer with yours truly, Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. And today's video is actually going to be featuring the Autel platforms. And more specifically, a feature they have that I was not aware of called Remote Expert. Remote Expert leverages the power of someone else's knowledge and experience to allow you on the user end to be able to program and configure and even perhaps in some cases diagnose system faults that you weren't currently capable of doing. So what I'm getting at is go back to what you've done last week or even last month and think about potentially all the jobs that you passed up on or perhaps had to hire or subcontract outside help to complete a job. In other words, maybe you completed the repair and with a proper diagnosis and, and you require after replacement of a computer, someone to program and perhaps configure, but you don't have the capabilities. You don't have the scan tool or you don't have the, the interface, the J2534 interface that will communicate with the vehicle and, and the computer or the, the scan tool you're using, or maybe even don't even have the knowledge or the confidence. Um, if that's the case, that's okay, because this is great news. Um, Remote Expert is going to allow you to overcome these hurdles and at the same time, maybe even allow you to learn and progress as a technician to give you the confidence to invest in the tooling. So we're keeping this revenue in-house and not handing it off to somebody else. But don't take my word for it. Take a look at this Zoom interview I conducted with three friends of mine, Maurice, Andrew, and Keith Perkins, who happens to be one of the remote experts that Autel leverages to help people like you and like me overcome these hurdles we're talking about. Take a look at this video and see what I get excited about. Hey, fellas. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing well. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you guys joining me. You know what? I was talking with a bunch of friends of mine. Um, you guys know me. I'm, I'm, I'm in front of the classroom all day long. Now. I haven't been in the shop in a while, at least all day. And uh, one of the things I find changing almost daily is, is computers, uh, programming, how we do things. Even if it's the same car, uh, the rules could change tomorrow or even that same day. So someone like me who's, who's not in the trenches like the three of you all day long, um, it's a bit daunting. You know, it's, it's kind of scary for me. And, and if, if I was in a position where I was working on cars full time and I wasn't yet programming, I'd be a little timid to get involved. Uh, with that being said, I'm confident there's a, a boatload of jobs I would just pass on, turn away, because I know I'm not equipped. And, and you know, if I, if I can't do the job right, I, I know not to get involved. So I'd rather just not do it at all. But so many people were telling me that it's not as, as difficult to get involved as, as people make it out to be. And um, what really struck me, the reason why I wanted to speak with you guys about this is because I found out that about 70% of the repairs that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis require some kind of scan tool function, configuration, programming, you know, putting in updating software, um, lining things up, shaking hands, whatever you want to call it. Uh, meaning all the stuff I want to do and, and pass on the other stuff, I'm going to end up passing on 70% of the work I would be doing anyway. Um, so I heard about this thing through, through Autel, you guys are offering called remote expert, remote expert. Did I say that right? What the heck is remote expert? Yep. So uh, remote experts, actually a platform that uh, we actually recently introduced, uh, on our higher end tools, the MS-909, MS-919, and MS-Ultra, uh, that gives the user the ability to reach out to uh, some vetted experts that uh, we know very well in the industry. Uh, so, you know, the platform will support uh, module programming, uh, pre and post reports, uh, features such as that uh, via their scan tool. That's phenomenal. So someone like me who, who doesn't know what the heck they're doing with programming, 
I, I, I own an MS-919. Mm -hmm. I can capitalize on this remote pro programmer feature? Absolutely. So it, if I were to do that, like, what's the added cost? Do I have to buy some more tools to do this? I, mean, I wouldn't say uh, you would need to purchase any additional tools. Um, essentially, uh, you know, the only thing we ask is obviously just basic uphold of the tool or, you know, so what we mean by that is uh, just pretty much keeping your tool under the software subscription, which we refer to it as a total care program or TCP. That, that's the only thing that's required on the user side. Okay. So here's my biggest concern. Okay, so now mm -hmm. I have this ability with the Autel MS-919 and, and through this remote programmer feature, excuse me, um, yeah, feature, remote expert feature. Um, what if I don't know what the heck I'm doing? Okay, let's say I get somebody like, well, Keith, for instance, me and Keith go back a long way. He's a really good friend of mine. I had no idea until recently you were a remote expert, so that kind of makes me feel better because I know you <laughs> know what the heck you're doing. But Keith, if, if I'm at the point, where I'd be calling you on the phone and say, look, I'm connected to the vehicle through the remote expert feature. Like, can you help walk me through that? I mean, cause I, what if I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah. I mean, just yeah. So it's a pretty simple setup. You, there's a remote expert button on your tool. You can upload like the report of what you've done so far. We almost always ask as experts that you, you send us the report, the pre-scan, right? We want to see what we're working with. And then there's a spot and explanation for what you've done. If you've replaced something or if you're requesting diagnostic help, or if you need to do just a scan tool function or something you think you're not capable of in the tool. Honestly, sometimes the tool is actually fully capable of it and we can walk you through on the tool doing that natively without using the remote expert. But yeah, oh, we get all that yeah. info on a report gets sent to us. And then we're able on our side to like basically prompt you through making sure everything's hooked up correctly. We can see, make sure everything's up to date. Like it's supposed to be like Maurice was talking about making sure your tools up to date. We often check to make sure the firmware is up to date and the, and the VCI and everything's set up for success. It's like a five minute process to go through the whole thing to set up. And then on our end, we can just hook up a factory tool to the other end and emulate it right over the internet to your car that you're connected to. Kind of like minute. stretching the OBD2 port over the internet is what we're doing. Okay, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I was under the impression I'm gonna get Autel support through the Autel tool using the Autel software, but you're telling me I can get factory OE scan tool capability i mean not similar the actual factory tool through this oh yeah yeah on my end i'm hooking up a micropod an mdp uh uh icom from bmw a, a gm mdi2 with the with the sps2 software anything factory i can hook up i've just got an obd2 port over here right above me actually uh, and i hook any factory tool I, I need up to it or whatever i've got and then i can emulate just basically like i said stretching the obd2 port over the internet from my port on my desk to your car that's insane. Well, what the heck am I skipping out on then? This makes no sense to me. Right. It makes sense to me now to go with this stuff, but I did, yeah. I just wasn't even aware these capabilities were even possible. Um, so what can I expect with this? Like, can I program pretty much any car out there like OBD2, 1996 and up? Is that how that works? Or There's some limitations. I think, Drew, you got some input on that? Yeah, definitely. So we do support anything 2007 and up. The reason why we go for something around 2007 is because that's when they switched over CAN networks to basically two wire. So those older vehicles, they were on a single wire network and those are a little bit more difficult than they need to be done at wow. vehicle. But at these newer cars, we are able to program from 2007 and up to be you safe. That makes sense. I remember even just working on the cars with the scan tool connected at the DLC, those older cars with the K line. Man, sometimes getting data was like pulling teeth. It was so slow to respond. So yeah, that, definitely. That makes some sense. Have, yeah, some of them even have their own proprietary connectors, not just the OBD. Wow. <laughs> okay. Good to know. So I'm assuming you get a lot of calls, Keith being a, you're a remote expert. You get a lot of calls for programming. I mean, what is the most, what's the most common request you get? I'd say what, what keeps you the busiest doing something like this? Do you only do programming or can, can you help me with diagnostics? And Yeah. So each individual experts got their own thing. They do. Um, 
I primarily focus on what my strengths are, do a lot of Nissans and stuff. And and then uh, there's other experts that do a lot of Diag. It just depends what each expert is comfortable with. So like as a, as a user, you can select to send your request to just one expert or just put it out in the pool and see who will grab it. Right. So there's lots of opportunity for different people based on their availability. And, you know, so what I see in my market share and what gets requested to me is one thing. But I don't know if Maurice or Drew, you guys got some stats on what's what's really the most common thing. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch base pretty much like on uh, like what's pretty much like common. Um, you know, what we're starting to see is a lot of powertrain, uh, a lot of body also, you know, but, you know, we believe it or not, we actually do see a lot of Nissan when it does come down to it. Um, Drew, what are you seeing on your side? On my side, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, like you said, powertrain. So we're seeing a lot of e- uh, ECMs and some type of uh, drivetrain computers. Uh, it just goes with whatever the market's experiencing at the time. So if there's a, a flood in a specific area, you might start seeing drivetrain computers just pop up on our um, our, our uh, network. Um, also, we do get collision shops looking for simple things like a blind spot monitor that needs to be uh, programmed to the car. They have the full capability of um, doing the calibration. They just need that module programmed. You know, I, I really want you, like what you guys have told me so far because I look at this from a couple of different perspectives. A, a, from a technician's perspective, of course, that's my background. Being able to accomplish my goal of fixing this car right the first time is something I definitely want to do. But more so even from a shop owner's perspective, you know, you don't have to turn away a customer and you're not turning away money. Uh, But back to the technician's perspective, watching this stuff being carried out, um, I'm like many technicians, I learn by doing, not just reading about it or hearing about it. So it sounds to me, if I take the time and pay attention, I can almost capitalize on this and kind of learn as I go. Maybe I'm wrong, but but that's kind of the way I'm seeing it right now. Does that make yeah, sense? From the, yeah, from like the technician side that's submitting the request, you don't really get to see what's going on on the expert side because you can't see our computer. But 99% of the time, we're walking through, through what had to be done. For instance, like Drew brought up about like collision stuff. I do a lot of like Volkswagen component protection removal on replacement um, blind spot or, or um radar modules on the front of a car for adaptive cruise control or or forward collision warning. And the shop will submit the request and say, look, we have all the targeting. We do these calibrations all the time, but this is a replacement module and it requires something else. I'm getting these codes and we can usually educate at that point and go, absolutely. All these Volkswagen replacement modules require us to move component protection using Otis because that can't be done with any aftermarket tool. Though it's the way it's designed. There's, it's, it's not a limitation of any particular brand. It's a limitation of everything but the factory tool. So I can go in, remove the component protection, and then they can use their their auto or, or whatever. Even if they've got like some OE targets or whatever, if it's something that isn't supported normally, they can then go in and complete that job with their scan tool after we get done with the the difficult programming part. Save them a bunch of money on a subscription, and and something maybe they're not familiar doing. That's phenomenal. Man, this really sounds like a big lifesaver. I appreciate you guys taking the time to speak with me today. I don't want to hold you up. I know how busy you are, but this this sounds like a no-brainer for someone like me who's not in a shop every day. Uh, programming, how, how fast things change, it's a little bit timid, but but again, being able to do stuff like this with somebody holding my hand, I really appreciate that. So lots of local guys near me. I say guys, you know, I mean techs, shops. They've got Autel tools. A friend of mine's got a a 906. Um, I think if if I I think I could easily convince him uh, um, to to upgrade to like a, an MS919 um, to get a hold of this feature, this remote expert feature. It's, it seems like it's worth its weight in gold. You speak to that a little bit. What do you think of that? Is that a good idea? So we did all, well. We do now currently offer solution for some of those technicians that already have like a 906 or a 906 Pro, and they wanna they wanna add that programming feature, but don't look to upgrade the tablet they already currently own. Uh, we offer the X Link. The X Link is our pass through device. It's a three in one, so you're able to use Remote Expert. You're able to, if you are an expert, use it as your command center for your orders, or even use it as a pass through pro- programming device with OEM software. So you get those three capabilities in one unit. So with your 906, you will add your ability to do your programming. Now, seeing that it's a standalone unit, we do have to have an order center page where you can post your remote expert orders. Uh, We did implement an app 
that connects to the technician's phone and it mimics exactly what you'd see on the tablet side. So you're able to upload your scan report, photos, TSBs, anything that you need to get the job done and help that expert. That's phenomenal. So he doesn't have to upgrade his tool just yet. He, nope. just... he can just go ahead and get that single unit. Oh, that's great. But again, I appreciate you guys very much for taking the time. Um, Maurice, I've heard from you in a while. Anything you want to throw in there, my friend? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, again, just speaking on the platform and speaking from uh, just experience with the platform and things like that. You know, we just like to bring brand awareness and like, you know, obviously, uh, you know, expectations, of everything. Right. So, you know, uh, I got our goal to the customer and all that good thing. So, um, you know, just like speaking mm -hmm. on how like, the how easy it is to create an order. Um, such as, you know, it's as easy as it is, you know, let's just say ordering something, right? So, you know, we 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 look at the order side when it comes down to ordering, we want our customers, our users, our end users to try to be as descriptive as possible. You know, so therefore, you know, if they're reaching out to people such as Keith, uh, you know, Keith has all the info right then and there instead of going back and forth, because what that does is that just puts a delay on things. You know, so items such as that, you know, we kind of do like to touch base on. Um, also with like uh expectation as well, right? So um, we want our users to understand that our vetted experts are uh, people just like we are, techs, ex-techs, or whatever the case is, where they also do own their own businesses. Uh, if we look at, you know, submit an order outside of normal business hours, um, order may not be taken as fast as it would if it was, you know, say midday or lunchtime or something like that, right? So submit an order on a Sunday evening at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening, I don't, you know, I'm pretty sure, I don't know about you guys, but I'm probably counting sheep at that time. So, you know, again, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, we give the guys time, our experts time to go ahead and, you know, grab the order for anything. So um, I'm scared to ask, but I'm sure you've gotten orders that late before, haven't you? I've seen my phone go off at that time. So <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. know about Keith, but I have seen my phone go off at that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will, I will agree. I, I appreciate you bringing it up, Maurice. We we want to help as many. It only behooves us to do as many jobs as we possibly can. But man, sometimes they come in like six p.m., seven p.m. Central Time where I'm at. I, I'm packing up and leaving. I'm not ready to set up and 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 jump on another car. I w I would love to help you. Guys. So yeah, if you're listening out there, you're looking at <laughs> requesting a job. You know, between like eight and eleven a.m. on Monday through Friday is probably a really good day to do it. Maybe Saturdays are a good day for some guys too. So I'll agree. Keith, you sleep. <laughs> From the expert side, I would appreciate that. <laughs> I had no idea you sleep, Keith. Yeah, I've got to do something <laughs> sometime. <laughs> well, fellas, thanks so much for joining me. This is this is really mm -hmm. exciting, this remote expert feature with Autel. And uh I'm 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 really looking forward to taking it for a test drive, pardon the pun, one of these days. Um I'd love to see how it works. So thanks again, yeah. guys. I appreciate you joining me. Enjoy the rest Good. of your day, okay, fellas? Thanks, guys. So what do you think? Pretty neat, huh? From what I see from this, it offers somebody an option to bettering themselves and their shop, being able to keep more of the revenue in-house instead of giving it up to a mobile um, solutions provider or, or calling over and over and over again for, for over-the-internet technical support. Being able to leverage the power of Autel's remote expert feature really gives you a leg up on, on diagnostics, on programming, on configuring, and, and learning how to go about doing these things yourself. So do me a favor, visit the, visit the link below here and get some more details about learning how to leverage the power of Autel's remote expert feature. And again, one of the takeaways from this, if you recall from the video, is it doesn't require any extra components, any extra parts or tools you have to buy. That's right. It's a feature of the scan tool platforms that Autel provides. So I am very excited about this. I hope you can see the power of this tool and how it can help you and your shop be successful and grow as technicians to better yourselves and better your shops for your customers. Again, I'm Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine, and I really want to thank you for joining me on this episode of The Trainer.